In this, the fourth installment in our series on preparing our files for press, I'm going to discuss the images in our document and how to ensure that they're linked, that they've been converted to CMYK, and that their resolution is at an adequate quality for printing. So let's continue with the same brochure we've been working on in the previous videos. And one thing you may notice is that my InDesign interface is slightly different now that I've upgraded to CS5, which I'm rather excited about. So let's start out by making sure that our images are linked. And I'm going to first go up to Window, and I'm going to open up my Links panel. The keyboard shortcut for that is Command-Shift-D. And this panel lists, of course, all the links in our document, all the linked files. Um, and let's take a look here at this column. We have some numbers here. There's a, a 1 and then a 2. And this is just a, a quick way to go to that particular link. So if I click on this, it brings up a magnified version of that image, which is kind of nice. And I can kind of just scroll through and take a look at each of my links. I can go over here to page 2 and so on and so forth. So um, that's kind of a nice feature. And I'm just going to zoom back out. Let's take a look at this column. This is what maybe could be referred to as an alert, or I guess um, InDesign calls it a status column. And if you have no symbol um, next to, if there's no symbol that appears next to a particular link, then it essentially means that um, the link is visible to InDesign and that there's no issues with it. Um, but if you come down here, we have two different symbols. One is this question mark, and the other is the exclamation point. Uh, the question mark, let's start out with that, means that the link is missing, that somewhere along the way, in between the point that we imported the image into InDesign and now, the image um, or the link actually uh, got changed, it, the, the file got moved, or perhaps the file got renamed. So what we need to do is we need to find where this link is because we can't send our, our uh, InDesign file to the printer um, with missing links. So I'm going to take a look first at which image this is. It's the old guy in the orange shirt and the tennis racket. And what I do know is I know that I keep all of my images, or I, I, my intent is to keep all my images in one folder, all of my links. So I think as a starting point, I'm going to go take a look at that folder, and perhaps the image got renamed. So I'm going to just click on one of these other images and I'm going to um, navigate my way to the folder where all of my images reside. I'm going to go to my drop down menu and I'm going to go to reveal in finder. This is just a shortcut to go directly into my finder to where my images are. And I'm looking at my list of images here and I'm looking for tennis guy and sure enough here's a tennis guy image and um, I, it turns out that I had renamed the file, that I had done some work to it uh, it looks like, based upon how I named it, that I con had converted the image to CMYK, had renamed it, but I did not update my link in InDesign. So that's what I need to do. I'm going to go back to InDesign, click on my image, and notice that the image file here is just tennisguy.tiff. So I need to um, relink to the new image and I'm going to choose tennisguycmyk.tiff. Click open and the image updates, the symbol goes away. All right, now the exclamation point means that InDesign sees the link. It's, um, the, the link is there, it recognizes the image, but somewhere along the way, the image got changed um, between the point that we imported the image into InDesign and, and now, um, the image got updated. And so we need to update that image in InDesign. Now first I'm just going to go to take a look at that image. I'm going to go back to Reveal in Finder. And I just want to make sure that this image is the most current version, that some older version of the image didn't slip into my InDesign document. Um, and to do that I'm just going to take a look at the, the date and time of when that image was last modified. I'm looking here, it says today at 9.49 a.m., which was just a few minutes ago. I had done a little Photoshop work to the image, so I know that that is the most recent version. It's the version that I want to appear in my InDesign document. So now I just have to update that, and to do that I'll go to my drop-down menu, and I choose Update Link, and now there's my link. The exclamation point goes away, and we're good. 
Okay, so next we want to check to make sure that all of our images are CMYK. And I'll let you in on a little secret. If you're exporting your document as a press-ready PDF, you don't need to convert your images to CMYK. Just leave them as RGB, and as long as you select the correct export settings in the Export to PDF dialog box, you're good. But many people refuse to believe this because they've been spending their entire careers opening their images in Photoshop and converting them to CMYK manually. Um, so in the name of nostalgia, that's what we're going to do here, just so you can sort of see how this process works. And this is where this link info area down below at the bottom of our links panel comes in handy. This link info area um, pretty much lists more information that you probably need to know about, about each link in your document. Um, so here we're looking at running.tiff, it gives the file name, the type of file format, the location, and then here we want to look at color space. This tells us if the image is either RGB or CMYK. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to kind of scroll through and check. So this one it sh shows up as CMYK, but this next one, my golfer guy, shows up as RGB. So we need to convert this to CMYK. Um, and we're going to do it manually, as I mentioned. So let's open this link in Photoshop. And one way to do this is to go to our drop down menu and go to Edit With. And then we navigate to the program that we want to open that link in. And in my case, it's Photoshop CS5. I select that, and our link opens. Now, a shortcut if you've set Photoshop as your default program. Um, to open with bitmap images like this. I'm going to just close that and instead all I have to do is option double click on that image and it opens in Photoshop. If you haven't set Photoshop up as your default program it might open in preview which um, you may not want, you probably don't want. Um, so those are two ways that you can open your links and the first thing I want to do is I like to save my RGB files in a folder before I convert them to CMYK, just in case I have to go back and make revisions to that RGB file. So I'm going to do a save as, and I, as you can see I have an RGB folder already created, and I'm just going to put that in there. It looks like I've already done that, but just to be safe I'll replace it, click OK, and now let's convert this guy to CMYK. I'm going to go up here to Image, Mode, CMYK, can ignore this alert that comes up. And now let's do another save as. We don't want to save over that RGB file that we just saved. So I'm going to do another save as, go back to the parent links folder, and I'm going to select save, save over that old RGB version, and then let's close this out. And let's just double check. So golfer to it automatically updates, which is nice, and we take a look at our color space, it's CMYK. So let's just take a quick scroll through to make sure these are okay. The EPS files we don't really have to worry about, and I believe that all these others are CMYK. Yep, that's the case, and so we are good to go there. Now one last thing, and that's checking our image resolution. Now as a general rule, you want to be sure that your images are between at least 250 dpi and 300 dpi. The place to check this is once again in our links info panel down here where it says effective PPI. Now the difference between actual PPI, which is right here, and effective PPI is that actual PPI indicates the resolution of the actual linked image, whereas effective PPI indicates the resolution of the image based upon its scaling in InDesign. For example, if you have an image that is only, say, 150 dpi when you open it in Photoshop and you scale it down to 50% of its actual size in InDesign, its resolution is going to double to 300 dpi. Now remember that resolution increases when you scale down an image and it decreases when you scale up an image. So the effective PPI here indicates the resolution as it appears in InDesign. This is what you want to be looking at. So I'm just going to scroll through my links to make sure that everything is over uh, 250 D DPI in the effective PPI setting here. When I say DP DPI and PPI, it's kind of an interchangeable term, um, just in case you're getting confused with that. And let's just take a look. That one's 810, 427, so these are really large, 291, 
EPS files you don't really have to worry about. Uh, that one's 473, 680, 798, 266. That one's probably okay. Now this one is uh, 278, actual PPI 240. Let me just, you know, it, when, when they're right around 250, I kind of maybe want to double check them to make sure that, uh, you know, they're okay. So let's just take a look at our guy here stretching. It's a transparent image already, so I'm not too concerned about it. But um, I'm going to double click and just make sure that it looks okay. So, you know, I zoom in. Whoops. This new Photoshop zoom tool is a little confusing. And everything looks pretty good. He's not too bitmapped. So I'd say that that image is okay. But let's just uh, convert this. I'm going to go to, um, actually, I'm going to go up to image and image size. And here it says that my resolution is 240. I'm just going to bump this up to 300. Um, I don't want my printer to call me up and say, uh, Howie, you have a, a, Im a image here that's below 250 DPI. Um, so I'm just going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to change that to 300. I'm going to save it. Image updates. Now it's actual, now it's effective PPI is 348. So I'm definitely in good shape there. Now I should say that I'm really only doing this for technical reasons. I don't want my printer, as I said, to call me up and say, oh, you're, you have some low res images in here. Um, but one very important thing to understand is that simply going here to image size, as I just did, and increasing the resolution, it may add more pixels to your image, but that's not really going to do much to increase the quality of your image. If you have a blurry low resolution image, ultimately there's very little you're going to be able to do to make it look good. And certainly simply increasing the number to 300 as I did is not going to do much. Instead your best bet is to go find a higher quality version or a replacement image. And we could sit around and talk about resolution all day, but remember, the ultimate test of the quality of an image is not as much the DPI, the technical DPI of the image, as much as how it looks to you and your clients when it's printed. So as I've said before, even if you're confident that all of your images are high res, be sure to request a proof from your printer before the job goes to press so you can make sure. And if you have a few low res images in there and you can't really do much about in terms of finding replacements, then you definitely want to see a proof to make sure those images are acceptable. Okay, so congratulations for coming this far by completing video number four in our series. You've done the bulk of the work needed to prep your files for press. Just a couple more items left, which I'll address next time. In the meantime, feel free to contact me with questions at howie at fortuitouspub.com. It's howie at f-o-r-t-u-i-t-o-u-s-p-u-b.com. And you can also subscribe to my blog at indesignjunkie.com. Thanks for watching.